is we live? Hey, is we live? You know, All right, like the, baby. Like the double and triple check. I ain't been live in, in months, though. We live, baby. I could tell. Uh, I ain't going to tell you how I could tell, though, but I ain't going to put you out there, but I know how. Man. All right. So, bro. You're professional, so you know how you can do it. Oh, I gosh. Sure. Chill out. Chill out. Chill out. All right. So, bro, y'all know who I am. Y'all know who Black is. Right. What y'all may not know is what we about to talk about. Well, hell, if you're looking at the title, you might. Shit, I didn't know. <laughs> look, look, let me tell y'all how this happened. We were just having a conversation amongst the men of 2020. And I was like, yo, I'm about to go live. <laughs> like, straight up. That's how it happened. All right. Yeah. So, I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go first, Black, and then, uh, and then you can go. And then you know how we just go back and forth. So, First off, let me tell every black person who watched the interview, I appreciate you for tuning in and watching the full interview. I think everybody is wilding on Jada. <laughs> I have no problem. I have no problem with her telling the truth about where she stood sexually with her husband. I have no problem that she went on her platform and talked about it. Because let me say this, I feel like the context that people are getting is that she just out the blue just started talking about, yeah, Will ain't really doing it for me. Nah, the whole episode was about women and talking about sexual awareness and health. And the person who kind of brought that conversation in wasn't even Jada. It was Gwyneth Paltrow. And some of y'all didn't even know Gwyneth Paltrow was on the episode. <laughs> right, right, right. I, did. I, I can actually say I did know that, though. Right. So I don't get what the hoopla is. Look, I get some people are going to be upset that she went on her platform to discuss this. But if any if anybody has contacted me and asked me about podcasting, if anybody has hit me up about starting a podcast, I universally say this to everybody. Get on there and speak your truth. Because once you build up a fan base, whether it's one, two, or a thousand people, you have an obligation to be Facts. transparent. Facts. You Facts. have an obligation to keep it 100 at all costs. So when she went up there and she was like, yo, you know, and this was the context she put it in. This is what she prefaced it with. She was saying, why do we automatically think that they are supposed to just know and match what I like sexually? And when they can't do it, we get so crushed inside. That was the preface conversation. So I'm like, you know what? I appreciate that. Because a lot of us do carry that energy that we think we are putting it down in every sense. And some women do the same thing. Think they, they cater to all the boxes sexually that we like. And then and truthfully, to preserve the ego of the other person, we just make them feel like they checking out all 10 when sometimes it might be like four or five out of 10. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Or, or or six. You know what I'm saying? So I just I just don't see where everybody's coming with this outrage, bro. And maybe you can enlighten me on it, bro. Well, you know, people like red meat. So <laughs> anything that's going to, you know, get them out there, they're going to do like piranhas and they're going to hit it. Hmm. Now, I, I can tell you what I personally what triggered me about it. OK, um, because I did I did a show about that last night. Um, or it was the last night. Yeah, I did a show last night or the night before that about that Will and Jada love. And my whole thing about it is, and I said this before I even did the show, I didn't watch the whole video. Normally, I watch the video. You know, I'm gonna watch the video first before I start talking about it. But my whole thing was, I'm tired of hearing whether this is for promotion or not. Will being the butt of the jokes, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like. She could she could have these conversations at the red table, but then it's like, are you having these conversations with Will like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. is it a healthy conversation? Is you are you outing him now? The the subject matter itself, I'm I'm sure it probably was a healthy subject matter, mm -hmm. but we don't, we don't care about that. <laughs> we here for the we here for the red meat. That's what we mm -hmm. here for. So I think it's kind of have a lot to do with that. Me, I. I see it in that way, but I'm not attacking them in that way. I'm just trying to see what the lesson is in that situation because, you know, I'll be talking about men and 
how you how you hold your frame and i'm looking at will now and i'm like will are you really an alpha male or do you just play uh, an alpha of men are you an mm. alpha of men or do you just play that in your relationships and even if that's the case that's fine but you know let's just go ahead and see it for how it really is but i think the people just there for the just for the red meat Zadora said this, I bet, and I'm going to click on it and bring it to the forefront. She said, right. I bet Will has other partners too. He just ain't saying nothing. Jada wouldn't be talking either if August hadn't said anything. So I'm going to be 100 with you. I feel like this is a conversation they've been having. I definitely feel like this isn't something that's just new and popped up out of nowhere. We've There have been rumors that they've been swingers for years. I don't know if anybody remember that. But I remember hearing this like way in like the like 2005, 2006. That's how they was getting by. And what better way? And let me let me let me make this a, let me make this preface statement. Listen, your marriage is your marriage. I ain't gonna tell you how to go left or right. I ain't gonna tell y'all how to do whatever. Uh, Casey said it best, man. It's y'all bed. You know what I'm saying? So whatever goes on is y'all business. So if they had the conversation. And Will already displayed that he loved this woman unconditionally. And this, and we'll get into the topic of love later on. <sighs> By any means necessary, he's going to try and do what it takes to make this woman happy appear. You know, that's what it appears to be. Oh, yeah. By any means necessary. And I feel like she feel the same way with him, which is why they can go and have they fun and come back home. Because even a year ago, a year ago when they had that red table conversation about August, they said it, they playfully said it, but they was like, we ride together, we die together, bad marriage for life. Bro, that was nervous energy, bro. Do, but, it, look like, do it look like we Will having fun? Does it look like Will having fun, bro? Around her? I think he, uh, I I'm think Will, about, I think ahead. Will loves his family. I think he has fun around his family as a unit, but with her one-on-one, -on -one, I think it's just, he's just attached to her. Just right. keeping it above. He, he emotionally, he's emotionally attached to her, right? Mm -hmm. And he does love her. I would agree with that. And I would agree that. And a lot of men and a lot of black men don't get credit for this is their ability to withstand it all, to take it all. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? There are men that, yeah, there are men that cheat, but there's also men that go to their grave loving their woman unconditionally, being called uh, simps. Mm -hmm. Even what I call them premium suckers, because Will <laughs> probably look like a premium sucker right now to me. But not in the sense of how he loves his family, but in the sense of his dynamic between him and his woman, because mm -hmm. they could have this conversation. They could. He could even agree to it that she could talk about it on the red table. Because, but it hurts. It looks like it's hurting. It looked like it hurt him, and he's staying out of the view of it all. And the only time we see him, he's trying to act his way into looking happy and we still can see it and he he's one of the best actors of all time you know yeah. what i'm saying so so it I, I i could see it on his face just like i could see what was going on before the olympics with old girl i could see the mm -hmm. same thing i could see the, the uh, train getting ready to crash I, I don't wish that on anybody because the dynamics of their relationship is their relationship i'm always with always fighting for it to the end but if it was the crash, I'm not going to be surprised, not one bit. Um, I wouldn't be either. I, I can't say how much we'll be able to take before he calls it quits. But it's just, I feel like, and I hate state, starting my statements with some shit like that. You, you know how I feel about that statement. But I honestly feel like this is a wake-up call to everybody when it kind of makes you check your meter on what all you will deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like as a man and as a woman, because as a man, that's embarrassing. That is really embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? To have that information put out there. But at the same time, you're famous. Your wife has a podcast platform. But this is what she do. But we ain't talking about what goes on in the bedroom, though, bro. Like, true. Like, like I get it. Like I do get it. Yeah. Like, like, like Zadora was saying, um, We'll probably do have other chicks. I don't doubt that. Just like I don't doubt if Russell Wilson have chicks. Like if people found out Russell Wilson had chicks on the side, they'll lose their freaking mind. <laughs> like 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 they'll lose it. They, and and they they they'll hate love forever because of that. But all I'm saying is this: he's not bringing it to the person's front step doorstep. 
this is being brought to Will's front doorstep. Will over there minding his business. He was he just got a movie with uh, Serena and Venus, and he was working out his dad body and everything. Will is a positive type person, and then when you bring this energy like that, then it knocks him off a of course. No different than if a dude was cheating on his woman and it came to her front door. A lot of times, women, whether they admit it or not, they'll say, hey, you can do your thing, but I better not find out about it. You better not have no kids, and you better not bring me no diseases home. Mm -hmm. And so, and all I'm saying is, in the adverse, since we like to do the vice versa thing, and men can do it, and since we like to do that, now you bringing that funk, which means like fighting and stuff, or, or bad ill intent to his front doorstep like it's making will look bad for real and being that he's the leader or the head of the household that is a reflection of your household people already say your kids is crazy you know what i'm saying like so will is just now looking like he's just hanging on for the ride <sighs> yeah yeah i i i i understand i understand I may not fully agree that he's, he looked like he just hanging on for the ride. I think we, we, you know what you're dealing with, bro. She told him off rip what it was with Tupac and that nigga was dead. Right. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, right. so, <laughs> like what they say, you knew the job was dirty when you took it. That's where I'm at, bro. That's you where know, I'm you at, knew bro. The job was dirty when you took it. That's right. where I'm at, bro. One million percent. He knew. When he married her, bro, he knew, cuz, like, Jada Jada ain't just turned into this Jada overnight, y'all. This right. has been the same woman for all these years, bro. That's, that's I think right. what it is, is everybody had a different perception of Jada. And now that it shows differently, it disturbs their view of the fairy tale marriage. Mm, I can see that. I definitely can see that because that's, that's why I think about that, Will and, that Will and Jada love was supposed to be that unconditional love. Correct. But I mean, here's the, go ahead. that's the ugly side of unconditional. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? Like in the army, what, what they say, uncon, like uh, uh, unconditional surrender. That means like, there's no glory to that. It's just surrender. Like period. Like ain't no asterisk by it. Ain't no flowers by that shit. That means surrendering completely and that's what will did bro like and i'm not mad at will i'm not bashing will i'm not mad at jada but i will say this this is what i said in our group i'm so glad she did this and let me tell you why i'm so glad she did this i don't want to hear shit when a man do it now uh oh i don't want to hear a goddamn thing when a man come out and tell his truth about him not being happy i don't want to hear nothing quit playing bro I'm so serious, bro. I'm so serious. I'm so sick of being told that you can't say nothing. What happens here stays here. Well, if she just displayed this, and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. So so what did she say in particular when it came to her and Will's uh sexual situation? What what was it that she said? <sighs> she she didn't even like specify Will specifically. That's the crazy part. She was she was just saying your other cannot know what it takes to please you or like to the effect of we automatically expect them if you love me to know everything I like to please me. That's what she said. Right. So let's talk about that then. So that way we're not just beating up on Jada about it because mm -hmm. some legitimacy in what she's saying. So if you if you were with somebody for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Do you not know what they like and dislike? I can kind of, I could kind of see that that happening because you get caught into the routine, and you know, one year's turn to three years, turn to five, turn to ten. You know what I mean? Like, so I could see that happening. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, I hate to bring it back to Jada. Like these are these are people that know how to communicate because she just communicated a whole affair you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it's not like they don't know they haven't been through these things before so how come when it comes to the sexual part which is ironic because you wouldn't have sex with this other guy and you're helping healing him that was your saying you were helping to heal him but your own marriage is on the is is having an issue or whatever for lack of a better term so to me it's almost like you're being disingenuous
That's how I see it. And I don't want to judge it, but the thing about it is I'm like, come on, Jada. Jada, for real. I mean, what's what's going to happen next? You're going to tell them that Will, you, you, Will, and another dude had a sexual encounter or something? What's next? What's next? How far are you going to go with it? Now, I feel you there. Like, how far? Where, where's the boundary? I get what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. Like, yeah, where, where's, where's the, the boundary? boundary? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? For respect. I don't know. Yeah, let's see what Zodora says. She got to look like she got some What's Zodora say? She said some people, and I'm going to share this with the crowd. She said some people have been married 20 years and never had an orgasm, so it can happen. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. But and now who fault is that, though? Who fault is mm. that? Who fault is that, though, bro? Look, I, that, I'm going to be real. I'm going to chalk that up to both. Come, oh, you, I hate you, bro. <laughs> I gotta be real. That's how I feel. It is, it is both. It is because it's the dude's responsibility to make sure she have an orgasm. But if she ain't saying nothing or if she ain't did nothing to try to make it, make oh, it, you mean like that? You yeah. mean like that? Oh, my yeah. fault. My yeah, fault. Yeah. I ain't understand. In that case, it's, it's it's the woman's fault if she's not expressing that. Yeah. Don't, see, the biggest problem I have, and actually, I see your point. I'm sharing in a second. The biggest problem I have is when somebody makes a decision for me. And I believe Ebony said it best one time. Anytime you take the ability to make the decision for me, I enter like instantly lose interest. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is this. Don't presume how I'm going to feel about your statement. You might be like, yo, I'm not I'm not fulfilled sexually. And you'd be like, "Nah, I can't tell you that because I don't want to hurt your pride. And then you're going to go and cheat with somebody else. Nah, don't presume none of that, because if you've really been with me, you know, I'm all ears. Communication right. comes first. So if you make the decision for me that you're not going to tell me the truth, that's on you. That's on you, babe. That's on you. Um, now, Ashley made a good point, too. She said, but people change. What you may have liked when you're 15, you're not going to like when you're 20, uh, 35. For sure. And I don't know how long they've been married. I know it's been a minute. No, they've they been married. They've been married, married in their 20s. Yeah. yeah. they got a couple 20-year-olds. So that is true because some of the shit I liked when I was like, 20 i wouldn't touch with a stick now that i'm 34 so i can feel that but at the same time whereas normal human beings like myself and black we we might have issues with conveying that to you know anyone we might be interested in i imagine that might be amplified when money is involved and with being a celebrity because you got different business ventures different times where you're at different locations, time investment with your kids, like all that. I can see how all that can play a factor into not being able to communicate like you want at that moment, you know? So oh, someone's not communicating their needs and someone's not receptive. So he was 27 and she was 22. Mm. That's what Ashley says. Who? So... See, I, I, I have a theory about Jada, though. I have a theory yeah. about Jada, but she was 22 and he was 27. So, I mean, at 22, you usually wilding out, right? Yeah. You wilding oh, out yeah. and you don't, and them, them is what they call your party years as a woman, right? Mm -hmm. So, for her to get married at 22, she saw something in Will. Now, I don't think she saw the alpha of men in will i think what she saw was the good guy oh if i want to have a family i know that he's going to take care of the parental need mm. he's going to provide protect and and get parental of it uh parental um parental awareness about it but the thing about it is that usually happened for a woman when she hit about 27 28 29 30 you know what i'm saying but now jada always been wilding out but this is where my theory kicks in. So she was with Tupac, whether they was in a relationship or not. She had a deep love and affection for Tupac. I think she really loved him to, on a, she said maybe like a family level or whatever. But I think that was her alpha in her life. And if mm -hmm. a man doesn't reach that level of what he was, she's an alpha widow. Like every man has to match up. And I think that's why Will had an issue with the whole living up to Pac because he could never live up to Pac as far as an alpha male in the sense of how they were. You know what I'm saying? Whether they are or not, that's something else. But what I'm saying is as the perception in her mind. And so 
So now she knows she had parental investment with Will. She know that he going to not leave her and she can do whatever she want. She she's fulfilling that her side of um that that part of her dating strategy. That's why I wouldn't be surprised if they got divorced and she well, she might not even have to do that cuz she already got uh, a sexual escapade with August or whatever his name is and that he was showing probably alpha traits to her. I don't know. And, and she just went with it. So she she she's having her cake and eating it too. She don't have no reason to really leave now. I think about it. It's gonna be up to Will if he doesn't know how to hold his boundary, but his love for his family might supersede that and he'll take that to the grave. Yeah. And uh I, I agree with your point about her marrying too too early because I don't think I think what is it scientifically the, the brain doesn't fully uh develop until you're 25 and up, I believe. Yeah, I can see that. So so I'm always against people getting married in their early 20s period. I don't give a damn how many years y'all been together because you're still evolving. Like like I was saying earlier, like we used to drink, get fucked up and go to work the next day. Like it was nothing in my 20s. Nigga, like <laughs> I don't do none of that now. None of that. Yeah, but then I look at our parents, my parents, my parents got married at 21 and 19 and that was the the, the cultural norm. And right. and and, and and a lot of those families stay married for 40, 30, 50 years. You won't probably see that in relationships so much now. But in that in that time, they were doing that because they had because society was different and they knew how to commit to each other. Now we got too many options. Like I can really yeah. get mad at my girl, not leave my house and hook something else up by going online. That's that's a reality. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, crazy. that's a reality. Like that's crazy. That, relationships have become so accessible and like so fast food. Like, I, and then that's another thing. I don't get why people feel like they're surprised when it comes to so many trash people. Like, I won't even say trash people, like trash priorities, because mm. I don't ever want to call somebody trash. Right. When you can get whatever you want, however you want it with the click of a button, bro. You're not really going to value it or have the correct assumption or perception of it. So if you can see a relationship get done with a couple of thumb strokes and a couple of playlists, you know what I'm saying? Right. If that's all it takes to get you in a pseudo relationship, bro, it's not going to mean that much to you. But with, with this one in particular, with Jada and Will, this was like we was talking about earlier. This was the example. And this 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 is how people felt. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna give that analogy because I ain't trying to get canceled. I ain't even trying to get canceled. But when uh, when, when the foundation of a family that you and you probably can take it from the context clues when you when you grow up thinking this is the model relationship, the model family, mm -hmm. and you get into it and you see that damn it can be just as fucked up as everybody else you know situation around here. That shit fucks with your faith and your belief and you get mad. And I think that's what's happening. People are lashing out because they feel like, hey, you fucking with my fairy tale. You making me feel like that might not be hope. Like anybody could fail. Y'all ain't supposed to fail. Like on Star Wars, and this is me being a nerd, when dude was like, you were supposed to be the chosen one. Like this, this is what that is. Y'all was supposed to be the chosen relationship. Right. Like, and this relationship can have its cracks, bro. Yeah, and it's easy to say, especially me growing up with both my parents, like you shouldn't use uh uh celebrities as a uh um like a, a litmus test for relationships. But now that I'm thinking about it, if, exactly you, did, if, 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 you, if you did if you didn't grow up seeing it, any type of assimilation of that, you're gonna try to at least learn something from that. Like mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's nothing you can't learn. From Will and Jada, because you definitely can live, learn unconditional love. Yeah, like up until this point, it looks like it's unconditional love uh, from Will's part. Now I don't know about what's going on with um, with Jada, but the thing about it is, growing up in a two parent household, I I seen how a woman is submissive, but yet and still wants to do what she want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. And and also, how does the man react to that? And I grew up with watching that. And it was a lot of things that I, that my dad did that I would, I'd be like, I can't do that one, bro. My, mm -hmm. my boundary don't go that far. But then he also used to tell me like, 
yeah, well, you've never been married before either. So, <laughs> so, so, so That's I get true. it. You know what I'm saying? So, which is very true because once I commit that, once I commit to that point, then it's almost like that. But my thing is I got to create my frame a little bit different um, according to how my mental firmware is set up. So some of that stuff would drive me crazy. Jessica just said, and I'm on, and we're going to circle back real quick. She said, did we really listen to what Jada said, though? She made some valid points. And that's the purpose of us going live, because she right. actually did. That's that's like I'm pro what right. she was saying. I'm for her getting out here and telling her truth and, and talking about, yo, stop expecting someone who love you to know everything about your body. Like communicate, you know what I'm saying? Because stuff like this can happen because you may be down for an open marriage, but that open marriage may not be conducive to your marriage. You feel me? Like it might be a band aid when you might need sutures, when you might need surgery. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm seeing here at least, but I'm for her talking about it. Cause if they can talk about it at a table, bro, that means we can talk about it amongst each other more freely and possibly save some relationships. So instead of feeling like, you know, Oh, this is a taboo topic. Oh, she making him look bad. Yeah. He, he looks bad, but, at the end of the day, we all talking about it now. Right, right. No, Somebody sure. gonna go to counseling because of this. <laughs> right. So. No, I just I don't know. She I mean, it's good. I mean, Will Will is all right. You know, mm -hmm. I ain't trying to say that even Jada is even bad for that. All I'm saying is this is like have that conversation with your husband. Like, yeah, and, and if a man and and then let's just say if a man did come out like this. It would not be received the same, like you said. It's easy mm -hmm. it when it's on this when the shoe is on this foot for us to say, "Well, we should have the most empathy ever." But then, as soon as a, a dude say something like, "Well, you know," uh, especially when they were saying black like black women didn't give oral, like that used to be men could never talk about that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, if a man was to say, "Oh," uh, to you like hey you kind of you got you you got possum sex or you got you know what i'm saying you just lay there like you did you know what i'm saying like if a dude say that your feelings is gonna be hurt you're gonna it's not gonna go off the same if a dude sat there and talked about how much oral that he don't get or if he talks about well these sexless relationships we don't talk about those things it's a mm -hmm. lot of sexless relationships um that men are enduring we never talk about that stuff so that's why it does is uh, it's a little unfair. It's an unfair mm -hmm. because we don't get to talk about it in the adverse. As soon as the man say, "Hey, I like my woman to be on top, but you don't like getting on top because your knees." Ah, now he wrong for saying that. Mm He's -hmm. body shaming and all mm -hmm. that. And so why 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 can't we have a a conversation clear across the board like that? That's what that's what. I think a lot of indignation do come from. And then when they see something like this, they don't even have to read what's going on. They just going to look at the title and run with it. I'm going to bring up something. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Read the title and run with it. Because that's exactly what the hell happened here to 68.2 uh, of the crowd who right. felt some type of way about this. Yeah. Um, because I what's crazy is I had to go and find the interview, like really go search. You know what I'm saying? Because I kept finding clips, 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 clips. No, I don't want the clip notes. I want the full context of the conversation. And what's crazy to me, what's crazy to me is that people will read the headline, have a full conversation, have a full uh, diagnosis, prognosis about this situation, but not understand how the trans community feel when they just going off the headlines of what Dave Chappelle said, Dave Chappelle literally talked about this, bro. People are going by what somebody else said and getting outraged. Y'all are doing the same shit they doing. And that is same hella shit. Weird. That's hella weird because I watched the, the Dave Chappelle thing and I was looking for it, but I wasn't looking for it. You know what I'm saying? I was watching it just to enjoy it the reason why i even watched it was because i'm like what did they make a big deal out of right so i'm, kind of, <laughs> so, so I'm, so I'm about to see what they're talking about but in the in the peeping what the artist is really talking about it's like when you look at a painting let's look at it for what the artist was trying to say not yes. how we want to draw out of it which is a perk of a drawing too which is fine you know what i'm saying but let's look at what the artist was going through when he made that so that's how i was looking at it and then at the end of it i was like 
damn, I gotta watch it again to see what everybody was mad at. Bro, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> bro, I swear to God, I said this too, because it put me in this position. And some of y'all might get mad and disagree with what I'm about to say, but it is it is what it is. It's a podcast. You ain't gonna like everything I say. This is your opinion. This is your <laughs> this is my opinion. This is my opinion. You right. know what I'm saying? I totally get why people felt the way they felt about Donald Trump. I fully understand now. What I mean by that is this. When you are in a group where you agree with somebody speaking their truth unabashedly, but seeing somebody get hated just because it's that person speaking their truth, I see why people would ride harder for that person because mm -hmm. of the fact they're speaking their truth. I understood Trump supporters more because of this Dave Chappelle situation. You know, you hella smart, bro. And did you just say unabashedly, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> you I definitely totally gotta come out here, here bro. You, 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 I mean, you got a soul out here in the Bay. That's what we be doing, stuff like that. But, hey, but you know what? Hey, you right, bro. I mean, like, when you see somebody that's just, quote, unquote, um, apologetic, unapologetic, uh, unapologetic, and they really in their truth, you got to kind of respect that. You know what I'm saying? And then people was taking like the headlines and running with it. Mm -hmm. It's red meat. That's all it is. And that's crazy. Uh, and I would like to think that we could try to get into the like the truth more often. Bruh, I'm glad you just ended with that statement. Jessica just said people want to connect to what makes them feel good. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right. And what makes you feel good isn't always right. And that's the problem. Shoot, most of the time it probably ain't right. Bruh, we, we've had this. So I'm, I'm going to peel the curtain back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So for two days, the 2020 network group, you know what I'm saying? We got our little Facebook group. We were in a full debate about loving basketball. Right. We were in a full debate about it. And it goes to show something that you view out of tradition, you know, out of respect for the culture may not be correct. But it made people feel good because that's what they were conditioned to feel good about. Like Zadora and I had a, a full conversation on the safe word one time about the song of woman's worth. That is the weirdest song to have sex to. <laughs> it's about a woman dying, giving birth, bro. Who is having sex to that song? Whom? Oh Who, God. bro? It's, it's weird that we allow our traditions to be unquestionable and that's and that's the issue with a lot of things right now we we are allowing things to be untouchable and i hate it i hate it yeah so when y'all see a podcast pop up i ain't saying it's gonna be us it might be off the rock it might be my brothers keep a shout out to them make sure y'all follow them shout out. if y'all see them coming up talking their truth and saying yo in this relationship i didn't like this or i felt like this don't you go and bash them bro they are speaking their truth bro they are coming clean with their soul, bro. Like, make spaces available for people to talk their truth and stop fighting them on it, bro. That wasn't your marriage to get upset about. Right. Ultimately. Ultimately, it's not. <laughs> the, only the, thing, the only thing I do is I look at... See, the thing is, you can learn stuff from other people. You don't have to yep. go through everything yourself, right? So, at the end of the day, let's just say on a blanket type situation okay let's say they had an open relationship it's arguable whatever let's just say that's what they have mm -hmm. now if you were to consider having an open relationship you need to look at this as some of these things are that can come out or mm -hmm. if you have a relationship and you want to be out here doing this podcasting and you in the entertainment business now and your face out there and then somebody speak their truth about you how you gonna feel you can look at it like that you know what I'm saying? So you don't have to sit there and judge it for the sense of they got a bad relationship. You can look yeah. at it and be like, hey, this is what comes with that. Am I prepared for that? And then let me go ahead and see if I could deal with that or not. Come on, Black. That's Come on, I, Black. I'll be looking at stuff. I'm not there to judge it because that's them that made that decision to do that. Bro, we're supposed to observe the art and take what we take from it. Right. And move on, bro. That's it. Listen, y'all, I appreciate y'all jumping in here, checking us out for the 35 minutes we went live. I ain't expected to go this long. I'm just going to be real. No, we could have went another, like, 
uh, 26 minutes because you didn't even read the comments. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but they, they, yeah. Shout, shout out, out to shout out to Dora. Shout out Ashley. Yeah, shout, shout out, out Carrie Rothschild. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Jessica Kesey. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my homie right there, man. She, look, when I tell you one day she spoke to my soul, bro. You ever let me ask you something? And let me say this before I go any further. And it's not pandering. I'm telling the truth. I love black women, bro. Mm -hmm. Anytime, anytime I get to have a conversation. And it's not just about them. They they are genuinely pouring into me as well. I appreciate that. For sure. Genuinely, I appreciate that. That is a good fashion old soul right there. And Jessica, y'all, like I, I love and support everything she does. Make sure you go and buy her book, though, while I'm talking. You know what? I need to go ahead and get on Amazon and get me a copy because I like to support my people. Black, what you got going on is coming up, bro. Uh, I'm just trying to get this YouTube page jumping so that we can really go out here so y'all can want to go live more because I'm telling you, people are really wanting, wanting us to go live. But, you know, you can hit me on the EBH Black Show on YouTube. Hey. I'm in the, I'll be in the 2020 page. Y'all don't hey. be messing with me because I'll be talking too much, I guess. They be but, getting mad at you. That's what I it know, is. Right? They be having a secret smoke. <laughs> I, did, I did a show this morning. I mean, a little earlier called Secret Smoke. They be having a secret smoke with me. I really love y'all if y'all give me the time to express exactly what I'm saying. Because, like I said, I don't be really judging y'all. I just be trying to take the good and try to put it out there where everybody can see it. But, yeah, you can hit me on there. Definitely go to the 2020 podcast page. Please say the LLC. You got to say the LLC. Shout out to uh, shout out to you, bro. You know I'm always appreciative of you. Hey man, you already know I support. We all family out here. Oh, I would be remiss to not call out my. I didn't realize that was you, bro. DJ Big Dream from the South got something to say. They're my podcast cousins, y'all. Yeah. They are fucking hilarious, bro. Hilarious and unorthodox and consistent. That's not like I need to go on their show then. What they be doing, bro? They talk about it all. Yeah, I need to go on that show then. Hook me up. Bro, get up, get up with Buck. You know what I'm saying? Eternity. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He he one third of the, the tag team champions over there. So yeah, yeah. most definitely, most definitely. So y'all, I ain't gonna hold y'all up because I ain't ate dinner yet. And I gotta I gotta go get to work. So um stay tuned. It's some news coming though. I can't tell y'all a whole bunch, but uh yeah, just stay tuned. Just stay tuned. We got we got some things moving. All right, y'all be blessed and uh please say the LLC. Please. Peace.